So today's video is going to be slightly different. It's going to be talking about the topic matter of cancer and actually how to deal with a, pa uh, a parent having cancer and subsequently losing your parents. In this instance, my dad's cancer this past year. Um, and kind of how to cope with that as best possible, psychologically speaking, as a young person running a business, obviously how it impacts your life also, and then how to overcome that long term in terms of psychological aspects of that. Again, definitely not an expert at this topic matter, but just kind of sharing my own advice and my own things that I've been through in the past year or so since losing my dad earlier this year. Um, so for context, my dad was diagnosed with cancer in Christmas 2018. And at the time I would have been in Bali. I was living in Bali for about two months over the period of December to January. Uh, came up for Christmas over about 10 days and my dad suddenly became quite ill. Uh, to the extent where he was struggling to eat food, he felt very lethargic quite quickly, pretty ill. And over the Christmas period, our family very kind of, um, they celebrate the Christmas period pretty well. And it's quite like a, a jolly period. Everyone has family friends over, etc. Often play games like Chubby Bunny, the kind of classic family stuff. And my dad wasn't really there for that in 2018. It was the first time, I became kind of aware of it quite quickly. My dad was getting ill. Uh, it's one of those things we kind of have like a gut feeling about it. Everyone in the family kind of knew. And then I went back to Bali for January, came back and we all sat down together. Um, and at this point I was actually just pushing my business also. So really trying to start the peak performance program, the consulting service, and obviously then developing that into an actual business as well. So I was working very hard at that point. But anyway, came back from London for the weekend, back to my parents' house in Hastings and we all sat down and my, my mum and dad said there's some important news to break to us. Um, kind of had like an inclination as to what that might have been based on my dad's own kind of behaviors previously the past month and obviously how ill he was behaving, well, ill he was pretty much. Um, yeah, so sat down, obviously broke the news that he had cancer and that it was developing at quite a significant rate. Um, and yeah, I guess my immediate response to it personally was kind of just like, right, I'm going to fight this very quickly. Obviously, I'm, I'm an A-type personality, someone who is pushing themselves to kind of new, bigger and better heights all the time in their business and obviously personal life also. Um, so for me, upon the, the break of the diagnosis, I kind of just immediately responded like, we're going to beat this straight away. Dad, you're going to be fine. You've got this. You're a fighter. You're going to get through this really quickly. Um, the rest of my family had a little bit more of a wobble, I think it's fair to say. Uh, having said that, my mum is probably the most incredibly strong person I've ever come across in my life. So she was totally like, yeah, we're going to smash this. We're going to beat this really, really easily. We got you, obviously, family are very tight. We love each other. We're going to support this, etc. Um, so she was very, very, very pushing in that respect as well, very strong in that respect, and myself as, as well also. Um, I think also I didn't really realise how significant cancer can be. Some of those things where you hear of other families, like someone having it, like a dad, a parent, a, a mum, daughter, whatever it may be, and you kind of think that's never really going to happen to us or you don't really give it so much attention to the extent where you think that might happen to one of us at some point. Um, so my immediate response was, yeah, we're going to get through this. Dad's going to recover in about a year's time. He'll be fine. He'll be around. Anyway, so that happened. He then went into obviously chemotherapy and having a few treatments. So the chemotherapy process would, I mean, it'd take a few months, obviously, in terms of treatments. And my dad would be going back to back and forth to a hospice. At this point, he started to get a little bit more ill and he had a little bit more difficulty consuming food source. He had cancer in his esophagus also. Um, so when it come to, came to actually consuming food, it became quite irritated and very difficult to actually have solid, solid food sources. So he started losing quite a lot of weight, became quite weak. But my dad's such a trooper and such a strong person that he was still carrying out all his work. He's still running his business. He was so supportive of us as, as a parent, as a dad, to my, myself, my brother, and also my mum to her husband as well. He's probably the most incredible person I've ever come across and so incredibly strong. Um, he was battling everything on, on all fronts. So he was going through his chemotherapy, recovering from that as best as possible. I remember texting him on a daily basis. He was always encouraging me to push me with my business and obviously what was happening in my personal life as well and give me advice all the time. He'd do the same for my brother, do the same for my mum as well, of course. And he was kind of battling everything on all fronts. So he went through the process of chemotherapy for about, I don't know, six months or so. He started to actually get a little bit better, um, which was awesome. So at that point, we... We were kind of very encouraged by the signs and I remember going back and home, back home to summer from London to Hastings where my parents live in the house and thinking, oh, you know, he's, he's doing pretty well. He's kind of looking pretty healthy. He's looking good. His hair wasn't falling out at this point because his hair would grow back after chemotherapy. So he looked like his normal self again, like had a little bit more weight to him, could eat solid food sources because obviously the, the chemotherapy is battling the esophagus cancer as well, which was great. So that was really positive. So we had a great summer with him, which was awesome. We actually managed to go out to Ibiza. Um, not to party, funny enough, but to the quiet side of the island to have like a family holiday for about 10 days in this really nice villa. Um, and he was looking pretty good. Uh, he was looking pretty good. Unfortunately, at that point, he had to have a stent put into his throat as well to help him process food. And that's where things started to go a little bit more downhill. Um, unfortunately, the stent operation it went well, uh, but then the stent fell through two or three times, meaning I had to have three, two or three replacements. Um, and as a result of that, I then fell through into his gut, had a massive issue with his gut and obviously his ability to process food. Um, which resulted in him having a cost me back. So that's when things went downhill a little bit more. But anyway, until about August, September, he was doing pretty well. He was pushing forward. 
Um, he was very happy, he was pushing as much as he possibly could do, he was taking care of everything else in life as well, which is great. And we managed to have like an awesome summer together and obviously he was, you know, he was looking pretty good. Um, unfortunately, towards the latter end of the year, things started to go a little bit more downhill. So the stent fell through a couple of times, it meant he had to have a couple of operations, he was back and forth in hospital all the time, as well as being in the hospice for chemotherapy treatment. So as you can imagine, he became pretty weak pretty quickly. Um, and it was kind of like a, a slippery slope where he just continued to get worse and worse and worse. Um, not from a psychological perspective, actually, he was, he was very strong on that front. Uh, and to the day he died, he believed he was gonna truly survive and overcome this battle with cancer. Um, but yeah, in, in that respect, his physical health was declining quite quickly. Um, and I don't know if you guys have experienced or anything like this, but my intention really to share this, this kind of my story with it or my experience with it is so that you guys have like an element of support or just, you know, you guys can learn from it potentially also. Um, it's very difficult to see someone that you love so carely, uh, so dearly, and obviously someone that's so close to you, like your dad, like my dad was my inspiration in my life personally. I mean, he's such an incredible character, strongest person I personally have ever met, um, most loving, most happy person I've ever met, so massive inspiration to me. But seeing someone like that slowly deteriorate in terms of their health, seeing them get skinnier, obviously more frail, lethargic, um, just not really wanting to, you know, being able to exercise, you know, actually walk around, it's, it's very difficult to see. Um, and it's, it takes its toll psychologically, but you're kind of in a fight or flight state for that whole period whilst they're, you know, battling obviously cancer in itself and you want to be there supporting them. So you don't really process that necessarily. If you're an A-type personality like me, um, I kind of wasn't really processing it to the core of what, the depth of which I should have been. I was kind of saying, you know, he, he's battling this, we're going to support him. It's not about how I'm feeling at this period of time, it's about how he's doing and how we can support him as best as possible. Um, so at that point, yeah, as I said, he had his stent operations. He had his third stent operation, I believe, and then uh, unfortunately he became worse in terms of his physical condition again, um, even though his chemotherapy was going pretty well and it meant that he was in a hospice and this would have been in around January, I believe. Um, hospice being a really awesome hospice, it was a really nice environment, they took care of him greatly, which is awesome, gave him you know, as much care as they could have possibly done. Uh, the intention of going to the hospice was for him to put on more weight and kind of recover a bit more physically because at this point he was you know, pretty much skin and bone and if you guys have seen someone with cancer, battle that, that you know, battle that battle, you'll see that they're kind of deteriorate physically quite quickly. Um, so yeah, he was in there pretty skinny at that point in the hospice being cared for. And that was about three or four weeks. And unfortunately at that point, he, he died in the hospice quite peacefully. Um, I mean, it was quite, quite a quick and dramatic decline. And to be totally honest, I wasn't really aware of that happening so quickly. I was going back and forth very often, of course, and obviously in contact with my dad and my mum on a daily basis, as you would do. Um, but yeah, it happened very, very quickly. Um, and I wasn't quite prepared for it, I don't think. And I don't think the rest of my family were necessarily, maybe my mum was, because she probably knew what was happening more so. But I think from our perspective, my dad was so strong for me and my brother, he was always saying, you know, I'm still here. To the day he died, he literally said, I'm still here. That was one of his last words to me, in, in a respect that he was still fighting the battle, still taking it on head on, you know, battling to, to survive for us as a family also, and obviously for him, so we could see our futures. Um, and yeah, it's quite a quick physical decline, but you know, he died in hospital peacefully and that was actually just before COVID-19 hit the UK. Um, so I remember having his funeral and then a week later, a week or two later, lockdown was announced. So it was a very weird period. It was very kind of like a, a total blur and obviously very tough emotionally speaking as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, my dad was one of the best people in this entire world. To be quite frank, he, he was incredible on all fronts. He gave everything to me and my brother growing up to support us and obviously give us the best life possible as a family. Um, he gave me and my brother everything in terms of, you know, he was working ridiculously long hours as a graphic designer and obviously started his own business as well to make sure we have the best education possible, the best childhoods possible. I have some of the most incredible memories of, of my time with my dad when I was a kid where we go to our, we had a little cottage in a place called Rye Harbour. We had amazing summers there where we go out from seven o'clock in the morning, we come back at 10 o'clock at night just playing football all day, going to the beach, uh, catching crabs, catching fish, whatever it may have been, because obviously it's a coastal town. All of them being with my dad, like learning to ride my first bike. He just gave everything to me and my brother. He, he loved us so much and was an absolute inspiration in that respect and a totally true fighter throughout his entire life. And obviously in terms of the latter end of his life as well, when it comes to his battle with cancer. And as a result of that is such a huge inspiration to me personally speaking, and obviously the rest of my family also. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously the diagnosis is a massive shock. And I mean, again, I'm sharing this so you guys can kind of like maybe relate to this experience a little bit more so, or if anything, take this and potentially learn from it in the future as well. Um, the diagnosis was a massive shock. As I said, I'm an A-type personality, so I kind of took it like a, you either, you know, fight or flight response, you either sink or you swim. Uh, for me, it was a case of, I wanted to obviously push as much as possible and support my family throughout that process. So I didn't really process the diagnosis, nor how serious it was. Um, I kind of thought, you know, we're gonna push my daddy's gonna go through this, we're gonna support him as much as possible, he will fight this. Um, and obviously subsequently that didn't quite happen, but that was my initial response. 
Um, and then, you know, to the day in which he, he obviously passed away, he passed away peacefully and in comfort, which is great. And obviously we, we spoke to him that day and we made sure we were with him on that day. Um, but it's still such a massive shock and something which I'll never want to experience again personally. It's very, very traumatic um, and something which I'm definitely still learning about myself and obviously still recovering from psychologically speaking as well. Um, but yeah, it's a very difficult period and you kind of don't really know what's happening. Like the world kind of seems to halt. I mean, it literally did with COVID-19 anyway, but everything seems to go on pause. It's just quite traumatizing as a whole experience, seeing someone that you love so dearly, so ill, so frail to the extent we can't really recognize them anymore. Um, it's particularly on like, you know, the coming days towards his death, like he was very, very frail and looked pretty fragile at that point. It was very difficult to, to kind of go through an experience um, and obviously seeing your family in equally as much pain as you were experiencing at that time is obviously very, very tough as well. And as losing someone that you love so much and knowing they're never coming back is, is an incredibly painful experience. Um, but I mean, the, the main things, or the fundamental things that I wanted to kind of talk about in today's video really was what I learned from my dad in terms of uh, one particular variable being that he didn't really take care of himself actually. And obviously that's kind of motivated me to really push the peak performance program, the service we run, and then take that mass market also. Um, very simply for the reason that my dad was committing so much to his work and he absolutely loved his work and obviously wanted to supply us for the best life. And as a result of that, to push financially speaking as well. It meant that he was working ridiculous hours. He was never consuming the right food sources, was often on the go. So therefore picking up things he could go with, not particularly sleeping very well either. So sleeping maybe like four, five, six hours per night. I mean, from the age of, well, as young as I can remember to the age of about 12, I, I barely saw my dad in the evenings even. He came back from work so we were going to bed. Um, so he'd barely sleep, he'd often be working, you know, very long hours, stressing himself out quite a lot with the business or his freelance work in, in Design Bridge as well. So, I mean, in that respect, it's something that I have to reflect on, obviously learn from myself as well. And obviously we're pushing the Peak Performance Programme, which is to optimise an individual's health and performance. So it further fueled that drive to push that and make sure people really take this seriously. Uh, but it's something which I can't state enough, like the significance of your health is so, so important, guys. And you guys really have to take care of yourselves in, in all variables. Otherwise, you know, long term, it could then potentially result in something like cancer and then leaving your family behind because, you, you know, you haven't taken care of yourself properly as well. So something to definitely be aware of. Obviously, I very much wish he was still here, but I'm so incredibly grateful for everything that he gave us. Uh, me and my brother, he gave us all the tools we needed to have a very happy and positive life moving forward, which is, is absolutely incredible. Obviously, I had 22 years with him. The best 22 years ever, he gave us absolutely everything, and my, my, my mum included as well. We were a very close family. We had the best family life. Like, every, every memory I have, I simply smile at with my dad. He was the most smiley, charismatic, loving, caring, happy person. And I mean, upon his death, everyone remembered his laugh. That was the only thing we remembered in terms of, well, the main thing we remembered, um, because laugh was just so uh, contagious and it's something which everyone could obviously relate to as well. All of our family, friends, everyone at the funeral, all my family included. Um, so yeah, these things are really important. Um, and obviously when it comes to dealing with losing someone like this or traumatic experience and managing a business, that can be very tough. And that's something which I wanted to discuss also. Um, so at this point, again, I was, I was getting my business, we're, we're pushing you know, multi six figures, we're, we're, the objective is to get to multi you know, seven figures and above and beyond. Um, and dealing with you know, your, your motivation to push the business and obviously losing someone so close to you, like your dad, like my dad, and who, again, I was so close to him as well, is very, very difficult. I remember it took me a period of probably about a month, kind of just on the back burners a little bit, not really focusing on the business at all, apart from doing like the, the basic elements of what I need to do in terms of maintenance work. Um, but I couldn't really think straight at all. When, you have, when you're dealing with such a traumatic experience, you can't really process your thoughts particularly well. You need to process what's happening. Um, so for me, I wanted to make sure that I processed his death properly and actually dealt with it as best as possible. And what I mean by that was I didn't want to hide away from it or shy away from it because it's a very painful experience. Some people kind of shut themselves off from the world or they don't interact with the fact that someone has died and passed away. And um, what I chose to do personally was immediately upon his death, I looked through old photos, all the memories we had, and I wanted to ingrain the happy memories I had of him rather than the memories of my dad being ill and the negative aspect of, of that treatment and that process. Um, so I immediately went through all the old photos, was looking at all the positive memories we have and all the happy experiences I had with my dad. And that enabled me to kind of move forward as best as possible, emotionally speaking, I think. I think that was a really good thing to be doing. I'm something which I'd massively recommend. I mean, to the extent where my dad was my screensaver, like two days after his death, it was, it was really important for me to do. Um, enabled me to process the visual aspect of him passing his way away and also remembering him in terms of the visual aspect also very, very quickly, which was very helpful. Um, and then for me, I really wanted to explore the, the psychological aspects in as much detail as possible to ensure this wasn't something which would prevent me from, you know, living a happy life and a, and a full life in, in my future, nor it would hold my business back as well. So what I chose to do was I sought out a specialist in terms of therapy, obviously psychological therapy. He's called Drew Miller. He's based in the Fulham area of London. 
um, and he specializes in a form of therapy called EMDR therapy. Now, I, again, I'm not an expert on this topic matter, nor this field necessarily, but EMDR therapy is essentially a process designed to help you remove emotions, well, as much as possible from painful experiences. Um, so for me, what that entailed was kind of process of going to Drew for a couple of consultations, talking about what happened in terms of that traumatic experience of losing my dad, um, probably, you know, the most, one of the most important people in my life, losing him and how significant that was to me. And then after that, we went straight into EMDR therapy. And the process is quite an intense process, I think it's fair to say. Essentially what you're doing is you are processing your subconscious thoughts or subconscious pain points. Um, so to the extent where, for example, you're going to a session, it's an hour long, you have these headphones on, you have these sensors as well on your hands, which are triggering certain physical things as well to trigger emotions. And you're basically put into like what feels like a REM state where you're pretty much dreaming. And you go through certain pain points. So it's kind of like a circle where you might go through 10 pain points, you might go through 12 pain points. I don't know the exact number. Um, pain points in your life which are really significant, like for example, losing your dad and the memories you have or the associations you have with that, emotionally speaking. Um, and you bring in certain strong characters into that position to make that as, as easy as possible for you. Um, so yeah, you, you pretty much go through this and the therapist may be asking you certain questions and you just reply from your subconscious to the extent where you don't really know what you're saying um, and you bring up such pain points which are so, you know, so prominent to you but you haven't really processed them consciously that you're kind of quite shocked. So for example, so talking about certain elements of my dad's death and my experience with it and how hard it hit me, um, you process subconsciously, so you say something, you're like, wow, I really am feeling that, I wasn't really aware of that. But what that does long term, and obviously this will take a period of months, it can take years even, um, is what Drew said to me, but I mean, I'm still going through it personally speaking, I don't know how long it will take, but um, it removes majority of the really painful emotion from a negative situation or a really bad situation. So for me, I can quite happily kind of recall all the positive memories I have of my dad and all the experiences I have with him and shared with him without having that negative emotion, um, which is really, obviously really positive um, for me in terms of having that memory of him as well. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about today's video in terms of my experience of like losing a parent and someone who you know was massively inspirational to me and so close to me, my dad. Um, who I absolutely loved and adored was the best person in this entire world and kind of how I felt and dealt with that and navigated my way through that and continue to do so. Um, one thing which helped as well, actually rather ironically, was COVID-19. Obviously it's a really terrible situation for the majority of people in this world and obviously I uh, wouldn't wish upon it upon anyone but for me what I enabled to happen was after his funeral, um, it meant that me and my family could just stay in lockdown for a period of what, three, four months in which we barely saw anyone and could kind of process what happened on our own collectively as three people, my mum, myself, and my brother, obviously my dog as well, but a little bit different there. Um, we could kind of process that collectively as opposed to having to deal with all the social aspects of, you know, losing someone, which is actually really nice because it kind of made the world feel like it was at a standpoint, it felt like totally still. And as a result of that, we could deal with things properly rather than having to kind of get on with our own lives very quickly, deal with the stresses of life. We kind of left in like a, a dead stop, if, 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 if you will. Um, so that was really positive in that respect. But yeah, again, today's video is just for the, the purpose of kind of sharing that experience and hopefully it can benefit someone long term as well. If you ever experience that, obviously I would wish no one that experience, which we wouldn't wish that upon anyone, but I wanted to share it anyway. And I'd massively advocate utilizing EMDR therapy if you do go through a painful experience, like losing someone, one of your loved ones or someone so close to you, I would massively advocate that. But yeah, appreciate you guys leaving this video a thumbs up and a comment and obviously subscribe to the channel as well for more content. But Bit of a different video, but just wanted to cover it anyway.